What's going on everyone? Vince the Longineer here. I'm super excited about this video because we are getting rid of all of this hose right here and putting in an actual irrigation system. So behind me here are two boxes from Irrigreen. They sent me their latest and greatest irrigation system. It is the smartest, most precise, most accurate irrigation system on the market. And I'm really excited to install it for them here on my property and test it out and show you guys how easy it is to run one of these systems. So this video is actually going to be video number one of a four part series, basically planning everything out. The other videos I'll have coming out, one being trenching, installing the pipe and installing the heads. Video number three will be going through everything on the app and getting everything set up and calibrated. And then the last video will be a recap video of everything we have done here. This is all part of our complete Era Green installation playlist. I will leave a link in the description below to where you can access that playlist and see all of the videos. And one of the reasons why I'm really excited about this system is it is really efficient. We have over 10,000 square feet here of lawn area between the front yard and the backyard, and we are operating this irrigation system off of only nine heads. But it goes beyond that. We are gonna be saving like 50% on our water usage because we are not gonna be overlapping. This system is going to basically print water within the footprint or the boundaries that we set it to in the app to water precisely where we want to on the lawn. So I'm actually walking on my property line right here and we have some really odd shaped areas here. As you can see right here, I've kind of got a head marked out here where one of the heads are gonna be. And the rest of this is where the trench is gonna be. But this head right here will be able to throw water directly to the edge of the sidewalk and follow the sidewalk all the way to the fence and then follow the fence line to the property line back to the head without watering the neighbor's grass, without soaking the fence, without watering the sidewalk or the driveway. It's just gonna place the water where we program it to within these oddly shaped areas. So one of the very first things you need to do if you're considering an ear green system is you need to go to their website. Their website will have virtual tools. You put in your address, uh, your map, a map of your property will pop up. Uh, you basically trace out the areas that you plan to irrigate, and then you place these heads. They have about a 25 foot diameter that are placed around each head, and you kind of space all the heads around until you have full coverage. And you can tweak things, you can change the areas and so on and so forth to get the coverage that you are looking for. And then that's basically going to tell you how many heads you're gonna need. One of the things that might be helpful to have on hand are two things. One is your water pressure, your PSI from a nearby hose bib, and two, the flow rate, gallons per minute, um, to, to let them know if you have enough flow and pressure to run one of these ear green systems. And what I mean by that is you're looking at pressures between 40 and 80 PSI. If you've got that, then you're pretty good for an ear green system. Um, if you're running at 40 PSI, the maximum distance that each head can throw is about 25 feet of water. But if you're on the higher end at like 80 PSI, you could throw further distance. You can cover more area with each head at about 35 feet. We are sitting at about 60 PSI, so we're going to get about 30 feet per head. And then you want to do that bucket test. You want to be able to make sure you can fill up a bucket, a five gallon bucket within 45 seconds, which is about eight gallons per minute. That's the minimum flow rate for one of these systems. Once you're satisfied with that layout and you've placed your order in a few days, you'll come home to a couple of boxes just like this. Let's take a look and see what's inside. All right, so we have two boxes here. We have nine total heads. So this is basically all the stuff that you're going to get. This is what each head looks like. So each one of these white boxes here has one of these heads inside. Um, you will also get corresponding cables. Each one of these cables here are 60 feet in length. You are gonna be daisy chaining from head to head with those cables. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Also included, oh, there goes one of my heads. Also included are going to be these flex hoses to go to each head. Um, one end connects to the head and the other end is going to connect 
to your mainline piping. And we have the brains of the entire operation right here. This is the main controller. You've got some cables hooked up to it already to go to your different zones the transformer that will be plugged into an outlet. And then beyond what Eurogreen will send you in terms of their equipment, you will then need to go out and get pipe and fittings and the PVC glue, things like that to get the main line in the ground. So we're gonna come back to the pipe in a moment here because you really need to lay things out before you even put an order together for that stuff. But I wanna take you into the backyard here to show you something else that you actually might have to hire someone out for to do if you're not comfortable doing it yourself. And while we're making our way to the backyard here, I do have a special promotion for you guys. If you stick along here till the end of the video, I'm gonna let you know how you can get a free Eurogreen head when you make a purchase of an Eurogreen system. So behind me here is a pressure vacuum breaker. This is basically going to prevent anything from getting back into the main line, into the house. Uh, this is actually something that I hired a plumber to install for us and have it ready to receive the PVC piping as part of our Eurogreen installation. Another thing you want to consider is electric. That control box, the controller box needs electric. Now, if you can get a line inside here, if you've got, say, on the other side of this wall, an outlet, you could probably drill a small hole and, and get the outlet to the inside of the house. I do not have that here. So I do have an electrician coming to give me an outlet box out here somewhere to where I can plug that transformer box into. You know, every town is a little bit different when it comes to irrigation systems and codes and building codes and stuff like that. So make sure that you coordinate with your local municipality to see what they require in terms of some sort of backflow prevention like we have installed here. So do you remember when I was talking about planning ahead of time before purchasing your materials? Well, we're back at that point now and the first thing you want to do is map out where your heads are going to be, starting with your plan from Eurogreen's website. When you were on Eurogreen's website, you were placing heads around to locate where they need to be to cover that certain area. So you can scale off of that and try to position the heads using flags like I got right behind me here to locate where the heads need to be. So as you can see, I've got one head over there don't know if you can see in the back there, I've got another head over there, another one right there, another one down there. Total of five heads in the backyard, four heads in the front yard. And basically when you put all those heads in place, then you can map out where you want the pipe runs to go to make sure you're getting the pipe to each head. Now, one of the nice things about the Eurogreen system is that it does reduce trenching. You do not have to put this whole grid pattern of trenching in place. We are really going with one trench all the way around the house. We're gonna have basically, you can see the white line here to the front yard, all the way to the back, to that back corner there. And then it's gonna loop around all the way down and around to the other side where it goes into the front yard again. That's going to be that main line. And then off of that line, we have these little T's right here where that flex pipe is going to go. That's that flexible pipe that's gonna basically tee in right here to the head. So it's important to try and lay all this stuff out as best you can. I mean, you could use mason line um, and stakes pulling straight lines in between each stake and then maybe using like uh, I've got this marking paint right here from Home Depot just to mark out the straight line so that I could remove the string line and then go with a trencher along the line and basically cut the trench along these these lines here and make it really quick and easy. Some of the other things you want to consider are utilities. I got a pipe that runs right through here and crosses somewhere right here. So when I'm digging, I want to be careful. I may have to hand dig in a couple of locations to make sure I'm not hitting any utilities. Now for an irrigation system, you're really only going down about 12 inches, 13 inches deep. Uh, I do have some drains here that are shallower than that. So I will be hand digging in some areas. I'm also going to be planning for right behind me here. There's a little bit of a low spot in this area. So I'm actually going to be putting the pipe a little bit deeper in that area because I know in the future, I wanna put a drain pipe there. Another thing to consider are future improvements. 
right here, we're probably gonna be putting a deck. So I'm not gonna make, I'm gonna make sure that my trench does not go through this area right here. So those are just some things to consider when you're laying things out. Um, also, depending on where you're located, you may need to put in a call to your local one call service to come out and mark out utilities. Usually they require three to four days in advance so that they can come out and spray paint and mark off where buried electric, gas, water, things like that, those buried utilities are. So make sure you look into that before you do any digging. And before you go gung-ho, trenching out everything, it's a good idea to double check your measurements, you know, measure twice, cut once kind of thing. Here I've got a measuring wheel. We're checking for two things. One is the distance from the head to the furthest point we wanna irrigate. We wanna make sure we have those distances within our ranges based on the PSI of the system. But then the second thing is you wanna go from head to head to make sure you're not exceeding that total 60 foot cable length. Remember I told you we would come back to that. You wanna be able to measure, not just from like the T's to the T's, but to the actual hedge. And you wanna trace out where your proposed lines are to make sure from head to head within the trench, because the cables are gonna be buried in the trench, you wanna make sure you are less than 60 feet from head to head. So if you stuck around this long, I really appreciate it. You are a true friend as always. If you have any questions on what we're doing here, leave those comments down below. I will answer every single one. If I don't know the answer to them, I will even go to Ear Green and try to get an answer for you. Now, you've stuck around this long. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a gift. If you're looking into getting an Ear Green system, you can get a free ear green head with your purchase. Just use the code Longineer to get a free ear green head. And that'll do it for this segment of the video. Next up, we'll be trenching. We have a trencher coming in a couple days here, and we'll go ahead and get all this trenching done, put all the piping in, install the system, test it out and everything. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for joining.